I'm going to ask you for your forgiveness in advance. Because of in light of our, our nation's current events, uh, we will spend some time on that. It is be somewhat maybe disjointed, I'm thinking, uh, because we'll also talk about what we intended to talk about, and that is what's going on internationally in the world and how that aligns uh, with Bible prophecy. In other words, today you should be asking yourself this question, can I trust the Bible? Can I rely upon God's word? How can I know that I can trust God with my eternal soul? You know, you can know that based upon God's previous performance. (laughs) And when I say performance, I mean, what did the God of antiquity do in the Bible? What did the God of history do? What did he say? And what did he do? What was written down and what happened? And when you begin to look at those things, you begin to realize that this God of the Bible can be overwhelmingly trusted with every detail of your life. And that we of all people, as followers of Christ, should be above the fray. It's not that we're not in the war. We are in the war. Uh, We are in uh, this world, but we're not, what does the Bible say? We're not good. We're not of the world. So because of that, we conduct ourselves differently. We've got marching orders. They're very direct. They're very clear. They're very liberating and very, very uh, uh, joyful. And we'll hear about these things today. So here's what we're going to do. We've done this before in the past a few times. We'll do it again today. I'm, I assembled a montage of verses that we'll read together. So you may recognize some of these passages and say, wait a minute, that doesn't seem to be the right verse number for that. Well, listen, the verse numbers are not inspired by God. That's what the editors did. But every word we read will be Bible. How's that? And um, so as we do this together, you guys know the drill. I will read the odd numbered verses. If you read together the even numbered verses, we will set the stage for today's happening now service. Are you ready? It's a bit a long one. So here we go. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good. Now, when these things begin to happen, look up, lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Preach the word, be ready, in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. And Jesus said to them, do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. Verse 13, and Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, 
and will hate one another. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Wow. Watch therefore, for you do. For you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep or died in Jesus. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. May that be today, by the way. <laughs> Verse 31, therefore comfort one another with these words. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And I will prepare a place for you. I will come again to see you myself. That I am very near you also. Wow. Do you know the only, you, <laughs> the, only that, the only problem with that screenshot right there is that it's not uh, in red. Letters written in red. You want to know why? If you don't know your Bible, friends, those are the words of Jesus himself. He said that I am going to come and receive you to myself. He's not leaving that up to an angel, some prophet, some pastor or pope. He's going to do it himself. And I, and I can't wait. Father, we praise you. We thank you. Lord, we ask that you would be the one today that would make sense of this message to our hearts that you would be the one that would deliver, Lord, what it is that you'd have us to learn out of it. So, Father, we give you these things, and we thank you. We thank you that our citizenship is in heaven. We pray in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. amen. You can be seated, church. And, um, yep, God had his own plan. He interrupted the world, for that matter. Not only America, but he interrupted the world, as instantly on Friday, um, International news was made out of our Supreme Court, and uh, we all watched that unfold. Our phones began to light up at 7 a.m., and uh, the whole day uh, was just given over to what's going to happen next, and what do you think, and uh, you know what's what, what's going to uh, transpire from this? Is this a step in the right direction? And all these questions. Uh, by media and all the things that are going on. And uh, let me, if you somehow were living under a rock these last few days, let me bring you up to speed on this. On Friday, June 24th, the United States Supreme Court corrected a bad decision, a bad law. A bad law, a constitutional abuse that never should have happened in the first place. This is not my opinion, uh, but this is the opinion of many legal experts. Of course, I'm talking about uh, the reversal of Roe versus Wade at the U.S. Supreme Court, the decision to legalize and to protect uh, abortion on a federal scale was overturned by this uh, particular court. And on January 22nd, 1973, the then Supreme Court of the United States ruled that a woman had the personal right to determine a human being as a result of pregnancy, thus ending life of a pregnant, uh, of a preborn uh, human. Uh, with Friday's ruling, the Supreme Court of the United States ended a very bad and wicked law that resulted in the murdering and the killing of over 64 million unborn people. 
And so what happens? Now, what happens to this? According to the media, you saw people freaking out, saying that uh, abortion has been banned and outlawed. That's not what the decision was. They didn't decide that. That, was, that's, that didn't happen. What happened was, is that you, the U.S. Supreme Court decided that the decision-making process by the Supreme Court in 1973 was actually an unconstitutional decision that violated law, that violated the U.S. Constitution. What this court did was say, we need to go back to the Constitution, which is what the Supreme Court is supposed to do, and we need to do what it says, recognizing that the court had no authority whatsoever to enshrine abortion as a federal rule in law, but that is something that is up to the states to decide, not the federal government. And so in an instant, all of that jurisdiction was handed back to the 50 states where it belongs. Ladies and gentlemen, number one, nobody's really saying much about this. Number one, uh, that is a tremendous victory for the U.S. Constitution. A document that's over 240 years old. Now you may not like, maybe you're watching right now or you're here right now and you don't like the decision of the court. You gotta understand something. The, the court doesn't make law. The court interprets law. And it interprets law based upon not emotion, but constitutional fact. The governing documents of this country. So people want to riot, I guess. I don't think anything's really happening. Really, not much, right? Did, did, weren't we promised that the nation would burn down over this? Uh, what's the deal? The court doesn't make law. The court is the one that says this is what the law means. So we need to understand that. But do know this. The Constitution won. Certainly, the will of God prevailed. Because in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 8 and 9, put it on the screens, look at this. In fact, I just read this this morning on a, on a news interview. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Ensure justice for those being crushed. Yes, speak up for the poor and helpless and see that they get justice. That's a 3,000-year-old statement from the Bible that sounds like it's a commentary on what happened on Friday. That's most remarkable. The issue about pro-life or child sacrifice is now, I, I personally believe, this is, this is my personal opinion. I believe that as COVID was a tremendous testing ground for everybody in every way, certainly the church, I believe that this is now the next phase. This is the next thing that the church will need to negotiate across the United States. You say, Jack, why do you bring it up? Isn't it a slam dunk? I am not going to announce or take the time to even give you their names. I don't want to give them any honor. But there are people in this nation who are household names that are in the ministry that are upset with the Supreme Court's decision because they viewed it as an invasion of the right of the pregnant mother. Listen, never recognizing once that inside that pregnant woman is a living human being. And I believe that this is a necessary, and, and, and I embrace it, coming division yet again within the church. Listen, you may, you may never hear this anywhere else. But listen, not all division within a church is bad. Sometimes things need to be divided. And the direction our nation is taking in this country today, division must happen. You're sitting in the United States of America, and based upon separation and division, this nation was founded as we broke away from the crown of England. You enjoy your freedoms that otherwise would not have been afforded to you unless there was a separation. And so I predict, and I'm not a prophet, I, I could be completely wrong, but from this moment on, you're going to see an increased division among those who call themselves Christians versus those who follow what God's word says. And there's a big difference in all of that. But I believe the separation has begun. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, not everyone uh, who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And the God of the Bible is all about life. Yes. 
And our Supreme Court voted and defended life. Now in California, in some other states as well, nothing changes here. You, know, you understand that, right? Nothing changes here. Why? Because jurisdiction was given back to the states. But in a lot of states, I've lost track of the number, maybe you know, but the last I heard was 26. Is it 26? 26 states now have gone pro-life as of Friday. 26 states since Friday. Two things. Number one, on Friday, you live through a moment of history. Number two, if there's any hope for America, it's that we would stop offending God with human sacrifice. And 26 states in a moment's time are now for life. And I believe what God begins, God finishes. I believe that abortion in California is numbered. The days for abortion in California are numbered. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 14, if you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blaspheming, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, a gossip, or any other person's matters. Verse 16. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him give glory to God in this matter. And here's the punchline. For the time will come for judgment to begin at the house of God. What does that verse mean? It means that God is going to pick a time, and I believe he picked it. And I believe we've been going through it these last several years, where God is cleaning up what he calls his church. And he's preparing his bride for his soon return. Amen. And so, listen, if you, if you walked into this building today, you don't know quite what you stepped into. We are all about following Jesus. We don't care about politics. We don't care about money. We don't care about the weather. We don't care about... We want to see Jesus Christ honored and glorified. And that is all about loving one another... And it's all about doing what Christ has taught us to do. We're not interested. You're not interested in my feelings or my opinions. We want to know what God's word has to say. And it is the believer's life to bring their life in alignment with the will of God. And on Friday, God was honored. Absolutely amazing. I'm going to ask you to put your eyes to the screen for... Uh, several or uh, actually four quotes that I've got up here. Uh, number one, California Democrat Nancy Pelosi said, today the Republican controlled Supreme Court. If you know anything about the courts, uh, you're not supposed to say what she just said. Has achieved the GOP's dark and extreme goal of ripping away uh, women's rights to make their own reproductive health decisions. Uh, not true. Not true. But by the way, all of a sudden, Nancy Pelosi knows what a, what a woman is. <laughs> and by the way, what about the women that are inside the womb? Why can't they be safe? What about their reproductive health? Why did this happen, Nancy? Because of Donald Trump. <laughs> I'm, I'm, reading, I'm, reading, I'm reading her quote. This is because of Donald Trump, the Republican Party, and there is super majority of, on the Supreme Court. American women today have less freedom than their mothers. That's not true. That's not true. Nancy, that's not true. <laughs> California Democrat Maxine Waters. Maxine Waters says, the hell with the Supreme Court. We will defy them. Now, guess what? I googled this. You can do this on your own. I, I googled what happens to a member of Congress, Senate, or the presidency who violate their oath. And this is what popped up. I'm not kidding. When they violate their oath, they're guilty of subversion, treason, and insurrection. When Maxine Waters says, the hell with the Supreme Court... We will defy them. The dictionary says she is to be impeached. Did you know that? I didn't make it up. Yeah. 
Next one. Who's the next one? California Democrat Kamala Harris. This is a health care crisis. Health care crisis for who? Think about it for a moment. Understand, millions of women in America will go to bed tonight without access to the health care and reproductive care that they had this morning. No, they still have health care. Blue Shield didn't cancel them. Without access to the same health care or reproductive health care that their mothers and grandmothers had for 50 years. This is absolutely not true. What's going on here? Finally, California Democrat Gavin Newsom. By the way, by the way, by the way, I, I need to say this. You probably think I'm beating up on Democrats. I'm not a fan of the Republicans either, okay? I'm going to make that clear. All right? I'm, I'm looking for statesmen, not politicians. But look, the Democrats are in power right now, so you've got to take the heat when you're in power. Gavin Newsom says, all who seek to have an abortion can come to California. In many cases, the expense for you to come to California for your reproductive health care will be at no cost to you. Really? You want to know why? Taxes. They've already announced about getting together to discuss how this is going to be paid for. Also this. Let me, see, let me show you this slide. Uh, is, well, okay. That's not this. I was, we can look at this slide, this one. Joseph Stalin said, those who vote uh, decide nothing. Those who count the vote decide everything. <laughs> well, that's sad. So can I just insert this, church? Um, I'm going to ask you to take a deep breath. And I want you to breathe out for a moment. Here's the deal. Voter turnout for this uh, primary was pathetic. Um, here's the reason why. People are discouraged and they don't think their vote counts. Let me tell you something. It doesn't take an Einstein to figure this out. If you want to restore integrity to vote counting in a world like ours, there's only one way to do it. And that is every single eligible voter votes. If there's an overwhelming turnout in voters voting, they can't cheat enough to fix that. You need to know that. You can't set it out. Be encouraged. Get back in the fight. Don't give up. That's, I tell you what, Friday was an announcement given to us by God that we ought to get back in the fight. Because... Because of what's going on around us. Now, I want to show you, um, I think we have, there you go. All right. Co uh, companies covering, get out your camera, take a picture. Companies covering some or all travel costs for abortions. City, Yelp, Apple, Amazon, Bumble. I've never heard of Bumble. I don't even know what that is. Levi's. I'll keep my pants on for now. Left, PayPal, Airbnb, Starbucks, Zillow, Disney, surprise, Meta, Bank of America, Tesla, sadly, Microsoft, Match, DoorDash, Netflix, Dick's Sporting Goods, Patagonia, JP Morgan, Read It, did I miss anybody? MasterCard. These are, these are companies that immediately said, we will pay for our employees to travel to California to get an abortion. So listen, in a normal country, if you're going to offer something like that, then what if somebody wants to have their baby? What if somebody lives in Minnesota and it's 40 below zero and they want to have their baby in uh, Southern California on, in December? Those companies must provide that option. You cannot say, we'll abort, we'll pay for the abortions, but we're not going to pay for the babies that you guys want to keep. That's illegal. So what's going on? Well, part of this all plays into what we're talking about today. And that is all around our world, and we're experiencing it here in our own land. There are spiritual dynamics that are in play that should wake each and every one of us up to the fact that 
There's a clear separation that's taking place between light and darkness, between good and evil. Friends, there's no place to hide anymore in the gray zone. I'm grateful for that. Look, Lisa and I just came back from a real honest vacation. We were actually, for the first part of the vacation, we were up in Yellowstone. We missed that flood by 12 hours. It was crazy. But we had a wonderful time up there. It was beautiful and uh, all of it. And we got, on June 14th, it was snowing on us up there. Uh, it was just spectacular. And then we sent the kids home. And Lisa and I uh, got in a plane and flew to Charleston, South Carolina. Never been there before. Fell in love with the place. And so we'll be moving there this afternoon. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, no, no. No, here's the deal. Uh, I got to tell you something. Uh, I couldn't wait to get back home for this reason. I didn't sense a fight there. I, I didn't sense an urgency there. In Montana, we looked around and it was gorgeous and it's like awe and it's fantastic. But in my spirit, I didn't sense a fight for what's right and what's wrong. People were just like almost in neutral. Are you with me? It was like people were coasting. And I, I felt like I was at out of body experience. I'm looking around thinking, do people not know what's happening? They didn't want to know what's happening. And the same thing in South Carolina. Beautiful, beautiful. And I can't judge a place by a week. I get that. But we went to churches. And not all, but many. Very, very woke. Very, very LBGTQ+. Plus, very, very Black Lives Matter. Making Why not have a statement out in front of the church, Jesus saves sinners, instead of a Black Lives Matter sign? How about Jesus saves all lives from hell for those who trust in him? But there's, there's no fight. I don't know if you realize, I had to go away to realize that living here in Babylon <laughs> is the best place to be for our Christianity. It's the ironing sharpening the iron. It's amazing. We can have boldness, we can have encouragement, we can have strength, church, because of the few things that I'll talk about now regarding these current days in which we live in. And that is we can trust our Bible. Number one, the biblical historical performance and reality of the scripture is undeniable. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 42 verse 9, Behold, the former things have come to pass. And new things I declare before they spring forth, I tell you of them. That is a radical claim by the Bible. And you and I are looking at a world that is saying no to logic and reason. No to actual science. You and I are living in a world that is grooming itself to embrace lies. Think of it. We're being conditioned to believe a lie. And even if you know the truth, the power of what's happening in your life, in our world, when you know something's true and what's being told you is false, you know you can't say anything about it because you're going to bring on the wrath of the classroom or the professor. You know that if you say something about, if you speak truth today, you are going to be singled out and you're going to be attacked. So you sit quiet. And I understand that. But if all of us go down that track of being quiet in the face of what's wrong, then we stand not at all for righteousness. We stand not at all for light. Is it terrifying? It's terrifying. But we've got to stand because you know what? This God that speaks to us from the scriptures and he says, I've spoken in advance what I'm going to do in the future. And God tells us that because he's basically saying this. So, because I announced it in advance, you need to check and see if I'm the God that I claim to be that I am. Amen. And the God of the Bible invites you to put him to the test. And God telling the future in advance, it's called Bible prophecy. That's exactly what he's doing. And the God of the Bible just stands there in truth. He is truth. He stands in truth. He speaks truth. He is truth. But you know what? You can take him at his word. You can test his word. He's done that deliberately so that you might know that he's worthy of your praise, worship, and for you to follow him. 
Because listen, I got good news for you. You follow him and you'll follow him right into heaven. That's where, that's where he's leading all those who will listen to him. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 21 tells us, tell him, bring forth your case. Yes, let them take counsel together. Who has declared this from ancient time? It's a question he's asking. Who has told it from that time? Another question. Have I not the Lord? Question. And there is no other God besides me, a just God and Savior. There is none besides me. Verse 22, look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth. What an awesome God we have. You can depend upon him. And that's an important note at a time like this all around the world and what's taking place. We've been watching and looking and talking to people that are in places of surveillance or military operations, things that are going on right now. And some time ago, we made mention that we could be heading toward the Third World War. Now many analysts are telling us that the Third World War has actually already begun, but it's, it's not a traditional war, not yet. Because America is too militarily strong to take out, you've got to choke off the blood flow to such a powerhouse as America and weaken it to the point that you can take it over. Why do I tell you this? To keep your eyes on the living God. To keep your eyes focused on the hope that God's word brings to us. Not to hide underneath your bed cover, but to get up and to be bold about what God says in the Bible. To bring people hope. Because nations come and go, and America will eventually be one of them. But the truth of the matter is, God has given us a moment, a glimmer of hope. Friday's decision was a glimmer of hope. Look, don't hate me for this. Hate me for other things, but not for this, because it would be a waste of your hate. you got to organize it (laughs) but whatever you think it doesn't matter whatever you think I saw the clip this morning during the presidential debates Mike Wallace of then Fox News asked candidate Donald Trump what would you do if you became president he said I would probably uh, appoint two no not two three Judges to the Supreme Court and overturn Roe v. Wade. And it's what? I mean, what? It was almost like he was reading a script. I didn't, listen, now this is, where I, this is where I disagree with him on. He, he, he stated, what just happened at the Supreme Court is because of me. I cringed when I saw that. <laughs> Leave it to Donald Trump to say it that way. I cringe though like you do because you know Nebuchadnezzar did that. And because God loved Nebuchadnezzar, God knocked Nebuchadnezzar out. Right? Until Nebuchadnezzar woke up to realize, I didn't do it. God did it. No, truth is, God did it. God did it. And we need to remember that. He's God and he's a saving God. He's a forgiving God. He's holy and he's righteous, but he's a God that you can rely upon. The second thing is this, is the fact that the Bible's future performance in reality is thrilling. The past, God can be relied upon. The future, what of it? Isaiah 46 verse 9 says, remember the former things of old, for I am God, there is no other. I am God, there's none like me. What makes you unique, God, we would ask. Verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. I love that. You know how people brag and boast? It's disgusting. This is God in a holy way boasting. God is saying, hey, I know it all. I know how it goes. And I'm here to tell you the future is something that you look to me about. 
That's why the believer should never lose hope. The believer should never give up. The Bible tells us, the psalmist says, if the mountains were to be uprooted and thrown into the sea, yet shall I trust in the Lord. Can you imagine, what if Mount Baldy and what if Strawberry Peak and Arrowhead, what if, those Mount, what if Mount Wilson got up right now and just went right into the ocean? God's word says, don't worry about it. Trust in me, I got this. God says, I've, I've, I've watched this whole, I've got it. Friend, you don't need to worry anymore. Seek him, follow him, obey him. Watch what he does with your life and watch what he does with your future. He's absolutely awesome. He's a God that can be trusted. And we'll talk more about as to why in a moment. But we can trust him with the past. We can trust him with the present. We can trust him certainly with the future. And regarding the present, look at number three. The Bible's present day performance and reality. See, I I have to put reality in there. Because when the Bible performs, when I say performs, I'm kind of talking about it in the sense of like a financial advisor type of a statement where somebody might say, well, you know, this is how that company or that stock has performed over the course of time. When you apply that kind of thinking to the God of the Bible, you either bow your knee to him in awe or you turn your back on him in ignorance. But when you look at his performance, he's perfect. So what's, what's going on in the present? Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, Jesus says, Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I want to interrupt myself here right now. There's a big movement in what is called Christianity that this new faith approach, heavily based on emotions, mind you, interpreting the scripture through emotions, where feelings dictate the outcome of your faith statement. I feel, I believe, thus, this is my reality, God bless it. And there's going to be a lot of disillusioned people when they find out that God does not bless your religion. He won't do it. What are you saying? I'm saying that presently, you and I are living in an age of profound deception, and it's going to increase. And I say that to warn all of us, and yet at the same time, once I say that based on scripture, this is the only thing that will keep you and I from being deceived. You don't have to, well, I hope I'm not, I hope I'm not deceived. Don't worry about it. Well, I haven't read my Bible in six months. Oh, well, then you'll probably... Uh, <laughs> You're a you're, you're prime candidate to get deceived. No, but listen. That's why this book is affectionately often referred to and has been for thousands of years as manna. Right? Bread. Bread to eat. This is what we eat. You eat the Bible, you will not go astray. In fact, uh, this verse won't be on the screen. It just popped into my head. But uh, take comfort in this. Many of you have read it the wrong way. Jesus said, such days of deception are coming that if it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived. Now, I don't know how you hear that verse. It's like, oh no. Well, you need to read it again. That in the last days, such great deceptions coming, Jesus said, that if it were possible, even my own, my elect would be deceived. What does that mean? If you're in a a, a freshman logic course, say that again. Amen. And I like the shirt, by the way. (laughs) It's not going to happen. It can't happen. Such deception will deceive people. If it were possible, it's going to be so powerfully deceptive that it would even deceive my own people, which makes it impossible for my own people to be deceived. What is that thing that keeps us from being deceived? That is knowing the word of God. Knowing the word of God. It's absolutely powerful. Back to that verse, Matthew 5, 17. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Jesus came to fulfill the Old Testament 
scriptures. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Right? So we're going to do a run through right now. A run through. The Bible says that Israel will return back to their homeland, the promised land, in the last days. Have you heard of a nation called Israel? Some of you who are young might laugh and say, what are you, you know, nuts? Listen, if you lived in 1947 or before that, Israel was, an, Israel was ancient history. It wasn't a reality. But according to the Bible, for prophecy to be fulfilled, Israel has to be a nation again. And the Bible said it would become a nation again. You need to write that down. For time's sake, research it later. Look at the book of Isaiah, for example. But Israel, the Bible says, would have to exist again. And on May 14th, 1948, Israel came to life again. Read the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36. It tells you how that happened. The Bible says the Jewish people would return back into their homeland in unbelief. Did you know that? The Bible says that the Jews would return from the four corners of the earth back to their ancient homeland, but they would come back not believing in God. Now, I don't know if you've been to Israel or not, but people who go for the first time are shocked to find out that there's so many Jews in Israel that don't believe in God. Which is a funny thing, because the word Jew means to praise God. But then you talk to a Jew and they say, I don't believe in God. And you ask them, why do you not believe in God? And here's the answer. They actually do, but they don't understand it. Where was he during the Holocaust? Oh, I see you're mad at him. I understand that emotion, but you should have read your book better. Deuteronomy chapter 28 said, if you do all of these wicked things in my land, I will expel you from the land and I will send you to the four corners of the earth and you're not coming back here until I draw you back. Did you know that church? The Bible says that. But they've been brought back in unbelief. The Bible says the world would see an increase in war on a global scale. In fact, I want to show you this slide. Seoul, Korea. Officials and experts in Washington and Seoul agree that North Korea is set to conduct, listen to this, its seventh nuclear test and its first since January of 2017. Did you know for four years we didn't hear a peep at a Kim Jong-un? And now he's back at... Uh, threatening the world. Why? Because he can. Right now, the U.S. Navy is spending more time producing videos on pronouns and they're having video courses on how the U.S. Navy is to address one another based upon the other person's preferred pronouns. Let me tell you something. If I was Iran, I would attack now. What, what kind of a message are we sending? Jesus said there's going to be a time, but right before I come back, that there's going to be wars and rumors of wars talked about. What about this? China and Taiwan. This is a keg. This is getting ready to blow, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, oh my goodness. I mean, this, I'm going off script right now, but we got that situation right now. We've got this bizarre, it gets more bizarre uh, in, in uh, Ukraine by the day. Russia has the power to turn Ukraine into dust in 30 seconds. So what's going on? How long has this thing been going on? I tell you what, it's going to keep going on as long as we keep sending billions of dollars there. And, and, and how is it that Zelensky, the, the president of Ukraine, gets to meet all these Hollywood actors and actresses uh, and, and have these amazing tea parties? I thought he was at war. What's going on here? I, my heart weeps like your heart does for the innocent people. But I, I'm starting to get the feeling that these power brokers of these nations don't care about people. I think something's going on here. But Lithuania, are you watching with what's happening there? They have stopped shipments of necessary supplies into Russia 
And Russia has turned around and said, we're going to give you a certain amount of time to knock that off, or we're, going to, we're coming after you next. If that happens... I don't know if the third world war has begun or it's going to start in Lithuania or it's going to start in Taiwan. Some of you young people need to hear this loud and clear. You've always known it. You didn't realize it. On the schoolyard, weakness breeds violence. Don't ever think for a moment that strength breeds violence. Do you guys who are old enough like me remember something called MAD? Remember that, the acronym? Mutual Assured Destruction. Do you know why you're here today? Because Russia, Soviet Union, and the United States shared nuclear powers, and we feared each other so much that neither one of them would press the button, because if you press the button, then in four minutes, you're going to be destroyed. Mutual Assured Destruction. Mad. We don't have that anymore. That's why you're seeing exactly what the Bible said, where the world is starting to shake, as it were, under the fear of global wars and rumors of wars. Everyone knows that at this moment, if China, can you guys put this shot up there? If China decides to take Taiwan, which they want it, who's going to stop China? No one. In the world, has the influence or the power to stop China? The Bible, we think, I speculate, the Bible speaks about the kings of the east rising up during the tribulation period. We don't know if it includes China. Many people believe it includes or it means the area of India today. It's irrelevant. Here's the point. Isn't it interesting that in Bible prophecy, there is no mention of China and there is no mention of the United States. The Bible says there'll be a destabilization of global economics and currencies. And we're watching that take place right now. Many of you, I don't know where it is right now, but... Many of you are licking your wounds with Bitcoin right now, right? They think it's going to go further down. What about the U.S. dollar? We got a big problem, ladies and gentlemen. China is offering the world to do oil oil currency transfers using Chinese currency instead of the U.S. dollar. I was told by a very renowned economist that if... Three nations, it takes just three nations. If three nations go with China's offer to go off the U.S. dollar, I don't know if you know this or not, maybe this is TMI, but every nation in the world has to convert their currency into U.S. dollars to buy oil on the market. If China takes three nations out of that factor, the United States U.S. dollar will plummet in its value. You think China knows this? You say, Jack, you're freaking me out. I'm sorry I came. (laughs) No, no, keep your eyes on Jesus because listen, the Bible predicts that God knows the future. He announces what's coming up. You want to know this. Is it scary? Is it painful? It's unfortunate. It's sad. But believe it or not, this is no stretch. On Friday, it could be that churches across America will mention what happened like it's being mentioned today and we could repent of the sin of abortion and a whole lot of other things that we've done as a nation. What if the church repented and God spared us from looming destruction? Did, are you guys awake? Did not God send foreign nations to chastise Israel by war when they disobeyed him? Do you live in America, ladies and gentlemen? Is there a God? Have we done wrong? Does he not have the right to chastise us? Will he? Yes. Yes. Billy Graham said, if God does not chastise America for our sin, then he's going to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, that ain't going to (laughs) happen. Friday was a message of hope. Could our nation turn around but for a moment, for a generation? Do you remember God told Noah, uh, Jonah, tell them, I'm going to destroy them. But then they repented. 
And for 40 years, Nineveh lived in peace. Could it happen today? That's up to us. It's up to the church. It's up to every pulpit and pastor in America. It's up to us. The Bible says that there's a coming political global reset. Just this last week, many of our national leaders and former national leaders met in Los Angeles to discuss such things and about a new world order, a new world governing document, a new economy, new leaders. I find that fascinating. The Bible says that the Middle East would also be in a state of crisis that would lead to the isolation of Israel. That's interesting. I want to show you this slide. Um, Russia reportedly drafts UN Security Council res- resolution condemning Israel over Syria. Why, why, what's that all about? Because Iran has moved into Syria and has positioned military assets pointing at Tel Aviv. So Israel took them out. And Russia sticks their nose in Syria and says, you can't do that to the Iranians. Did you follow that? This kind of isolation of Israel. Then this government of ours is now distancing itself from Israel. As we speak, according to the Bible, the Bible says that Israel will be abandoned in the last days. No nations will stand for its protection. Read Ezekiel chapter 37 and 38. It'll tell you that right there. And oh, by the way, in those two chapters, the, the nations that are with Russia in its intimidation of Israel, the nations are mentioned by name. And they're all Islamic nations today. And all of them hold the doctrine, theological doctrine of the annihilation of Israel. What do you think of that? Think that's a coincidence? I think there's another map. Did we need to? uh, Well, that's good. Israel warns Assad his palaces could be targeted uh, of next counter Iran strikes. That's because they're putting the weaponry near schools, public places, and and the. (laughs) I'm sorry. You guys, we're talking about Syria. Iran put their weapons next to the president of Syria's palace. Are you tracking this? Why did you put your missiles next to my house? Because we don't care about your house. We don't care about you or your country. We're using you to destroy Israel. Fascinating, isn't it? We're living this right now. And the Bible said there'd be days like this. Psalm 83. Next slide. That's what we should just do, is just burn through these slides for time's sake. Uh, That's the airstrike. We can move on from there. Uh, Turkey, Algeria, Libya, Sudan, Ethiopia, Persia. uh, The area of Magog, Meshach, and Tubal, Russia. According to the Bible, Ezekiel chapter 38, Russia will be the leader and the military supplier of the nations mentioned there to go against one little country the size of New Jersey called Israel. Literally, remarkable, amazing. The Bible says that there's going to be an increase in apostasy in the last days when people are giving up on Christianity. This is the big deal right now. There's a Barna poll that's out right now that there's been not only a great decrease in professing believers in America, but that during COVID, according to George Barna's data during COVID, that number even got smaller. I actually personally disagree with that, but that's his data, that he's a researcher, that's what he does. That didn't happen here. It didn't happen where the Bible was taught. But I think God is cleaning house. I think he's getting his people ready. It's quite a dynamic. Very quickly, I have to wrap this up for time's sake. We need to get this straight. And I'm going to read a note I wrote to myself. We need to get this straight. 
If there is no God, think about the context of America right now. I want to do whatever I want to do. If somebody wants that that woman's husband, who are you to tell me I can't have him? If somebody wants their neighbor's wife, who are you to tell them he can't have her? If I feel this, why can't it be right? Why are you thinking this way? What about God? I don't believe in God. Is what we're hearing today. So I wrote myself this note. If there's no God, then there are no rules. And when there are no rules, there's, no, there's lawlessness. And when there's lawlessness, there's nothing left but me, myself, and I want this and I demand that. Everything becomes acceptable. What is right or wrong will be based upon my feelings and the way I want things to be. It's humanism, church. It's secular thinking. It's a nation without God. And when that happens, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20, Woe to those who call good or or evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put sweet for bitter, or bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And I'm going to show you this video. It's only a few seconds long. Listen to this. This is unbelievable. Ready? Can we please stop saying pregnant women? So I'm a third year medical student, and all throughout medical school, I've had a ton of lectures associate pregnancy only with women and people who use she, her pronouns. And I'm just here to keep it short and sweet to say, not all pregnant patients identify as women or with she, her pronouns. Thank you. She is a medical, she's gonna be a doctor. She's gonna be a doctor. So, so the Bible says, listen, maybe, you're, maybe today you've, you've come in here and you've never heard anything about the Bible before. Granted, today's a, a different service. We're not in the book of Romans today. The Bible says there's going to t- a, a time will come where good will be called evil, evil will be called good, bitter will be called sweet, sweet will be called bitter, light will be called dark, dark will be called light. And this medical student is telling us that she's tired of people saying that as a woman that they're pregnant or a pregnant woman. So will those companies we saw earlier fly men to California for them to have their abortions? You laugh, you could be thrown out of class for laughing. This is how far it's gone. But what does it mean? It means God anticipated all of this. So the encouragement, we have to end encouraging. We have to end with some encouragement. (laughs) Jesus, the scripture says, therefore, whatever you eat or drink, whatever you do, do to the glory of God. Live your life to the fullness. You say, Pastor Jeff, you know, you're talking about all this stuff, but I'm in love and I'm engaged and I want to get married and, and I'm pregnant or whatever it is. Hey, go for it. Yeah, but isn't the, we don't know the day or the hour. You and I as believers, we're to live joyfully unto the Lord. And listen, if, you, if, uh, if, if God's brought you guys together and, and you're engaged and you're going to get married, go get married. Well, we're a young family. We, we want to start a family. We want to go for it. Don't go, oh, we can't, honey, sorry. Call off the wedding. Jesus is coming back. I mean, get married. And if he comes back in the middle of your marriage, that, that'd be great. I, 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 I have often told uh, grooms right before we come down the aisle, Lord, bless this guy, bless the whole thing. And Lord, we do pray. The only thing greater is for you to come back today. And, you'll, and the, the guy, he has a hard time saying amen to that. It's like, maybe tomorrow? 
But the Bible tells us when we see these things, Jesus said, begin to happen. Look up for your redemption draws near. Church, let's stand up together if you would. I want to leave you with this. God says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Listen to this. Then you will call upon me and go and pray and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you've searched for me with all of your heart. Follow God. You'll never regret it. You will have nothing to fear. God wants to move in America. He sent us a message on Friday. Let's be encouraged by that. And let's do the right things that honor him. Jesus died on the cross and rose again from the dead. That you and I might have life in his name. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. God bless you.